Look at strumming the guitar. It's a topic that not a lot of people cover, uh, not a lot of books on strumming, um, and there's a bunch of features to strumming that can make the guitar sound great, and rhythm guitar is a super important part of playing the guitar, um, despite the fact that lead guitar gets so much, uh, so much attention. So one of the features of strumming the guitar is the amount of impact you make on the strings. So one way to work on that is to um, take a really simple chord, like, an, like a, a regular E chord, first finger on the first fret of the third string from the bottom, second finger on the second fret of the fifth string from the bottom, and third finger on the second fret of the fourth string from the bottom, and uh, the rest of the strings open. And one of the things that causes a strum to not sound great, um, especially uh, for people just starting out playing, is they dig the pick in too much. Uh, with the fear of missing the strings completely, they uh, overcompensate by digging in. Also, if you're just starting out uh, strumming or you haven't done a lot of strumming on the guitar, uh, use a softer pick so it has a little more give if you do happen to dig in too much. So an example of digging in too much uh, would be like if you're strumming the guitar like this and you, and you get that sound, you can literally hear the, the pick being bent or um, as it goes across the strings. That's not an attractive sound. Most of the time you don't none of, almost none of the time you want that sound. So how to uh, work your way into getting a, um, a much better sound out of the instrument is to uh, pull the pick out as you're strumming across it. So you're strumming like this, pull back, and now intentionally miss the strings. Then bring your hand in until you're hitting the strings like that. It's a really pretty good sound. And then intentionally go too deep in and get that slappy sound again. Now intentionally pull back out and pull the pick out to the point where you're not hitting the strings again. Hit that sweet spot again. Intentionally too deep in, sweet spot, and, and out beyond it. And keep working on that so you get the, a real good feel for aiming the pick across those strings evenly. Once you get a nice sound out of the pick, um, out of the strum, or even before that, you're going to want to start working on patterns. Strumming patterns are an important part of playing the guitar. And if we think about, let's say in 4-4 four, four time, we have a down strum on the 1 count, an up strum on the and, a down on the 2, an up on the and of 2, a down on the 3, an up on the and of 3, down on the 4, and up on the uh, end of four, then that strum pattern could literally look like this. It could be uh, one and two and three and four and with a potential strum on all of those eight units. The, the number, one, the end, two, or sorry, and, two, and three, and four, and eight positions. Um, and the numbers are always down strums. If we're dividing into eighth notes, uh, one and two and three and four and and by driving those down strums with the ands we get a lot of locomotion out of our strum pattern. Um, then we have the option of doing a number of things. We can either have impact when we hit the string on the one. We can have silence and then come in on the and or we could have uh, one one and then come on on two. So on the and of one, one and, we have the holdover of that strum. Um, uh, and so by thinking about, or we can have silence. Uh, uh, one, one and, two and, like that. So there's a number of different options that we have when we're looking at what would happen in those various locations, even if it's just one bar of strumming. Um, a book that's handy for understanding this is the uh, Belson book, uh, Louis Belson's uh, Modern Reading Text in 4-4 Time. Let's see if I can find the cover. Uh, the Orange and White book and uh, Modern Reading Text in 4-4 Time by Louis Belson is basically the, the Bible of strumming. Um, it's basically a drum book. Louis Belson was a drummer, played with Count Basie, Duke Ellington, uh, a bunch of jazz luminaries played on the Tonight Show. I saw him on the Tonight Show a couple of times.
uh, when it was Johnny Carson's show. Um, that's how old I am. And uh, what the Belson book is, is it's actually um, 92 or so pages of one note. Um, essentially, it's a drum book, but we use it for learning how to strum as well. And you can see that I've written in a count, one and two and three and four and, and then the directions of the strums. Uh, this is a rest in music, and then these notes would be places where there would be impact from the strum, and we'd hold it over. Uh, where there are rests, we can either um, work on getting silence for those sections, or we can just work on holding it over, because holding over is something that we do more often when we're strumming the guitar than stopping uh, the strum. And so if I was to do this first, um, first line, uh, that would look like this. Uh, and I'm going to count myself in two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four and one and two and okay so I actually held those over I want to stop them it could be one and two and Two and three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and like that. Um, both of those are good to work on, but holding them over tends to have a little bit more value. Obviously, we can't have a holdover on the first one because it's a rest and there's, there's nothing that precedes it. To hold it over. Uh, line two of page four would be one and two. Uh, sorry, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and and that's how that would go. Uh, so how we turn that, which sounds obviously very mechanical, uh, into something that's more valuable. Uh, would be to change chords during uh, some of that. So we can either do that by doing a, an entire line or even the entire page and just changing the chords randomly and sometimes magic happens. You get a really nice sounding pattern coming out of random selected chords with uh, the, the, uh, the, the patterns going through the page. But if we just chose one, let's say we chose um, the first bar of line three, uh, the rhythm of that would be on the E chord one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so if we change chords we might change chords on the front half of the bar and the back half of the bar so i'd uh, be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and that sort of sounds like a 70s pop song uh, there's a whole bunch of different things we can do with that uh, kind of pattern. We can also split the um, the count or split the chords uh, within the count between the uh, one and two. That second uh, one and the two could be a different chord. And so that could sound like this. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Not as useful for me, unless we slow that down. Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four. So that might be a more useful thing as we go along. And there's a whole bunch of different things we can do with that as well. We can also do uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That's a C chord. And what I'm doing is just taking that second finger off for the two and the four. One, uh, one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four. Or I can alternate one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And four and one and two and three and four and one. Or we could do uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and do like a little extra bit of strumming for there. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and do the same thing on F. One, two, three, four, and 
And all that matters is that we're getting all these great, well, maybe not so great, but a reasonable uh, uh, song ideas out of uh, pairing the chords up with the uh, strum pattern. The other thing that we can do is we can involve a metronome in our work. That's my physical metronome. Um, you can get one online for free all over the place. But there's my, uh, that's going at, uh, let's get at 96. 96 beats per minute. And I like having my metronome not have a different sound on the one. Sometimes you get uh, like beep, boop, 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 beep, boop, boop. I like having just all beeps because um, by doing that, I can work on it and not have to wait till it comes around to the one again. Any of them can be treated as if they're the one. So that could be... Um, if I do page four, right from start again, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then I can be changing chords. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and then work my way through uh, the remainder of the page, uh, either changing chords, not changing chords, but really also working on getting my tempo correct um, and getting my tempo to be really square. One way to square up your tempo is if I clap along with that uh, metronome, I should be able to drown it out by clapping and counting out loud. And that could be... One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I made the metronome disappear, although it was still ticking. Um, so, one of the things that can happen is um, working on getting that so that if, if you're able to drown out that metronome, you're clapping and counting right on the place, the very spot where it ticks. And that would indicate that your tempo is, is on time. Um, you can also work on getting ahead of the tempo and behind the tempo. There's certain times when that's valuable. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two. I'm going to go ahead of it. One, two, three, four, one, two. Now you can hear it. I'll get right back on it again. Two, three, four, one, two, three. But I'll get behind it. One, two, three, four, one, two. Jan, back, back on it. One, two, three, four, one. And being able to control tempo like that means that if, um, let's say you're playing with somebody or a bunch of people and the song is dragging, you can um, get just a little bit ahead of what the metronome would be ticking and that'll help speed everybody up a little bit, uh, get everybody back into time. Um, some people, you know, have a really difficult section of a piece of music can sometimes drag that, that section. Um, a lot of times I'm playing with drummers with, Ex exceptionally good uh, timing. Sometimes I haven't had that luxury, and uh, if a drummer is dragging, you can help them uh, keep up. If everybody's using the drummer as a timekeeper, then getting them to be a good timekeeper is obviously valuable. Um, uh, drummers, that's not their job. Their job is to be just another musician on stage playing their instrument, but um, you know, if you're playing with people who are struggling, then, then that can be a, a, a bit of a factor. Sometimes it's you that's struggling, and that's a factor too. Uh, but Belson book is really handy to uh, to walk through, um, and I teach it as a regular part of of, um, of my lesson time. Okay, hope you enjoy.